This is the Bitrix Juggernaut Ultra FS Pro. It's one of the most powerful and capable e-mountain bikes on the market right now. And guess what? It's Canadian. Based out of Saskatchewan, Bitrix makes a ton of different e-bikes from commuters to mountain bikes. I teamed up with them today to show you one of their most capable and powerful EMTVs. But first, let's put it together. I gotta say, I've unboxed a few e-bikes in my day and this has to be one of the best packed bikes I've received in a long time. Right after getting the bike out of the main box, I quickly went through the accessories and found the charger. I then located the keys to unlock the battery and take it out of the frame. I set it to charge on the side while I was putting the rest of the bike together. I decided to swap the bars out right away because I've tried a few of these flat bars and I knew they wouldn't mesh with my riding style. I got this bar and stem combo online. They're strong, inexpensive, and they feel great. After getting everything back onto the new bars and in the right place, it was time to put that front wheel on. The caliper was already perfectly aligned, so I didn't have to fight with it. I just love it when that happens. It's nice to see the good people at Bitrix care about little details like that. I then put on my own pedals and took that boat anchor of a kickstand off. The kickstand would be nice to have if you're just riding gravel paths or really smooth trails, but you guys know, those aren't the types of trails I like to ride. Tell me, is there a better feeling than taking the protective film off a new toy? Oh, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Oh. I think I'll name her Jugs. Yeah, Jugs. <laughs> okay, okay, back to the trail. With a retail price of only 4,000 US, the Juggernaut Ultra is not the most refined EMTB out there and definitely not the lightest, but it makes up for it in power. Equipped with a 1000 watt Bafang motor and a 910 watt hour battery, there's nowhere this thing won't go. And get a load of this, that Bafang motor puts out 160 newton meters of torque. That's twice as much as any Shimano or Bosch out there. The model I have comes with 27 and a half inch wheels with three inch wide Maxxis tires front and back and a RockShox RST suspension combo with 140 mils of travel. There's also a fat bike model with 26 inch wheels and four inch wide tires. I've got the bike set up pretty much stock right now with a few exceptions. I've changed the contact points. I put my own pedals, seat, and handlebars on. This is just a personal thing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the ones the bike comes with. To me, having a comfortable and stable connection to the bike at all times is really important. And that's different for everyone. Here's a couple geo numbers. The head tube angle is 67 degrees. It has a 470 mil chainstay and a super long 1280 millimeter wheelbase. This should make the bike super stable at speeds and really good on the steep climbs. It might be a little tricky on the tight switchbacks of a climbing trail, but let's find out. Having a motor to assist you up the mountain is a game changer. I personally don't get any enjoyment out of the climbs. Now I understand there's people out there that love the climbs and love the challenge. They push themselves and enjoy the workout, but I'm not one of those riders. Just like a day at a lift access bike park like Whistler, you're just as tired at the end of the day. You've just done 10 runs rather than just one or two if you had to pedal up. It's just a different workout. And to me, it's a full body workout, not just legs. I also love getting to the top of the hill feeling fresh. No cramps, no jello legs. You just feel strong and ready to take on the gnarly trails ahead of you. 
Now, don't get me wrong. I know the climb will always be part of mountain biking, right? You have to get to the top to then ride to the bottom. But if you give me a way to cram more fun into the limited time I have to ride, I'm all over it. Well, it made it up all those tight turns with no problems. And the power that thing has is insane. But all those numbers mean jack if the bike isn't fun to ride downhill. So right off the bat, I felt right at home on this bike. It has a ton of grip with those big three inch wide tires. And the added weight of the battery and motor just make the bike sink into its travel and just gets glued to the trail. I didn't even notice it was wet. Everything just worked. I did notice the weight for the first time when I had to break into a corner. I was carrying so much speed and I didn't know if I could brake in time. Luckily, they built this bike with really strong four piston brakes biting on a 200 millimeter rotor. That slowed me right down and gave me even more confidence. With all that speed, I had zero issues getting airborne on the little side hits. It felt so good. So it did great on a blue flow trail, big deal, right? How about we take it down a black diamond with gap jumps? After a few runs, I was feeling really good and comfortable on jugs. I was pulling up more on jumps to get more hang time and I was coming in faster and faster into those burns. I knew that if I could keep my speed up, I'd have no problems clearing the gaps that were coming. So it's definitely not as nimble and poppy as my Polygon trail bike, but it's different. Ooh. I felt like I had to use more strength and power to make the bike do what I wanted to do. And that's what I realized. You get just as much of a workout riding a big e-bike all day. But instead of the climb being your workout, it's the dozens of runs that you do and the extra effort you put into them to manage the heavier bike. Okay, this bike is a ton of fun to ride. I'm not gonna lie to you guys and sugarcoat it. It's a heavy bike. But you know what? It still jumps. It still goes wherever I want it to go. And it's super planted. The tires feel like they're Velcro to the trail. So I rode this thing for four hours today. I did over 10 runs on my local trails and I didn't even crush half the battery. It was still at 67%. I have a ton of upgrades in mind for this bike to make it into the ultimate EMTB. I'm gonna try to find a 29 inch fork to run it as a mullet, maybe even a dual 29er, who knows? It also desperately needs a dropper post and I'm gonna try my best to route it through the frame. Let's see how that goes. When that video comes out, I'm gonna put it right there. But in the meantime, Here's the one that YouTube thinks you'll like to watch the best. I'll see you guys there.